today in our 2018 Mazda CX-9, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C13284. So here's what our hitch is going to look like once we have it installed. All we're really going to see is that receiver tube sticking out because the cross tube is going to be tucked behind the bumper nicely. Our hitch is going to offer us a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening, which is going to be great for bike racks, cargo carriers, and lots of other accessories. Now the way we're going to mount all of those accessories is going to be through the hitch pin hole here on the side. Now it is going to accept a standard 5 ace pin and clip. While these aren't included in the kit, you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com using part number PC3. Now the safety chain connection points are going to be a plate style welded to the bottom. And we're not going to have too much trouble getting most size hooks on or off. Just keep in mind if you are using some extremely small hooks coming from the side may be a little bit difficult because you do have slightly larger flange there than you do on the front. And you'll notice that that hitch pin hole is slightly offset from the opening so it is going to make it easier to get those hooks in place and not have to worry about the hitch pin or a locking device interfering with it. Our hitch is going to have a 600 pound tongue weight which will be the maximum downward force at the receiver tube along with a 4,000 pound gross trailer rate rating. Now that's going to be the maximum amount it can pull including the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. Now our hitch is also rated for use with weight distribution systems and that's going to be a separate component that's going to be mounted on your trailer. That's going to keep the tongue weight at the same amount but it's going to bump up the towing capacity up to 5,000 pounds. Now with all those numbers in mind, you always want to double check your CX-9's owner's manual and never exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. I'd like to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you out when deciding for accessories for your new hitch such as a ball mount, a bike rack, or even a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's going to be right about 5 inches. That measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough clearance so that it doesn't come in contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be right about 14 and 1 quarter inches. Now the measurement is going to come in handy when looking at ball mounts to make sure you get the appropriate rise or drop to match up to your trailer. So now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to want to come to the back of our CX-9. At the very bottom of the bumper here, you'll notice that you're going to have two little push pins in place. Normally, there's going to be a plastic appearance panel that's kind of tucked behind and up underneath this section. Now, ours isn't there, but in case yours is, you would remove these two push pins. And then if you follow underneath, on each side, you're going to have a 10 millimeter bolt that you're going to have to pull out. And this little notch here, you would reach up and push in on the tab, and then the whole panel would come down. Now typically, I do replace these and put them back in place in case you do want to put that panel back up if you ever take the hitch off. But once you have it removed, you're going to go ahead and leave it off because we're not going to be reinstalling it. And we're going to have to lower our exhaust down, but before we do, you want to make sure you get some kind of strap to support it. Just find a secure spot to hook your strap onto. And then if we come towards the back by the tailpipe, we'll notice that we're gonna have one hanger towards the center of our vehicle at the very back, and another one right behind on the outside of the muffler. Now we're gonna have two of these, and we're also gonna have those two in the same spot on the other side. Just gonna take a little bit of spray lubricant, and I'm gonna spray down the hangers. And it's just going to make it a little bit easier for those rubber isolators to slide off. You just take a pry bar. And the main goal here is to get the rubber isolator to slide off that metal post. You may have to get a little creative on how you're prying against it, but typically if you use the hanger to pry against it, it should slide off pretty easily. So we'll repeat that for the other remaining hangers. With all the hangers loose, go ahead and lower our exhaust down a little bit. Make sure it's still supported, but just giving ourselves a little bit of extra room so we can get into the frame rails. Now if we look on our frame rail, we're going to have a few holes that are going to be on the bottom. We're going to have a large one towards the very back of our vehicle. And then if we move forward, just behind that rubber isolator, we're going to have a smaller one. 
Those are going to be our two mounting locations. So we're going to want to take our pole wire, take the coiled end, we're going to feed it up through the smaller hole towards the front, and we're going to feed it back, and we're going to try to get it to come out the larger hole towards the back. Sometimes it'll help if you reach in and kind of help guide that pull wire out. And once we have our pull wire out, I'm going to put a bend on both ends that we don't have to worry about it falling all the way through or the tail end getting pushed up into the frame. We're going to take a square hole spacer block. We're going to feed it over the coiled end of our wire. Then we can take one of our half inch carriage bolts. We're going to thread it onto the end of the wire. Then one piece at a time, we're going to feed our block and then our carriage bolt into the frame. And we'll pull on our pull wire until the bolt drops through the block and down through the frame. For our rear mounting hole, it's going to be a little bit different. We're still going to take our pull wire, except this time we're going to slide our square hole spacer over the top and then thread the bolt on. Then we're going to feed our bolt in first, followed by the block. And then we'll pull it back down through so that bolt engages it coming through the frame. And we'll repeat that for the other side. With an extra set of hands, we're going to lift our hitch into place. You just want to make sure you put your pull wires through the corresponding holes going from the top of the hitch going down. You remove the pull wire, then we're going to take a half inch flange nut. And we're going to get at least one on each side so the hitch will hold itself up. You want to make sure you secure the rest of your hardware down, getting it at least hand tight. I'm going to come back with a three quarter inch socket and I'm going to snug up all my hardware. I'm going to come back with that same three quarter inch socket and a torque wrench and I'm going to torque all my hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. repeat that for any remaining hardware. So now we can get ready to put our exhaust back up, but to help us out a little bit, I'm going to spray a little bit more of that spray lubricant on the hangers and on the isolator. You're just going to want to lift up the exhaust, kind of push the rubber isolator over a little bit, bring it up, and then slide it back in place. Now once you have one in place, it may be a little bit difficult to get them bent out enough, but we should be able to pull our exhaust over like this to help us get the other ones on. And with all the hangers back in place, we can remove the strap that was supporting the exhaust from earlier. And that'll finish up your look at the Kirk Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C13284 on our 2018 Mazda CX-9.